Brighton's finest. This is Juice. What is the most memorable message from a fan? Like, have you got a weird request or a lovely gift? Once we um, we went, you said in an interview that we liked lemon drizzle cake or something like that. Kind of ironically, because my mum often makes lemon drizzle cake for us before we go off on tours, and everyone's like, "Wow, okay, more lemon drizzle cake. That's cool." And because that was said in an interview once, it was then this sort of downpour of lemon drizzle cakes from. <laughs> from uh, audience members. And uh, yeah, I, I think even just the mention of a lemon drizzle cake sort of makes me feel quite physically sick. Um, <laughs> so no more of that, please. <laughs> Maybe time <laughs> to move on to the Banoffee pie. Yeah, we can move on to, you know, all different kinds of... I mean, it's a, it's a big, bold, brave world out there, isn't it? A world of cakes. <laughs> what was the last concert you went to as a member of the audience, and how would you describe it in three words? Uh, <laughs> I think it was seeing the Lemon Twigs at Moth Club, which is our sort of local little venue around the corner, Hackney. It was, three words, impressive, depressing, and inspiring. Because <laughs> they they you haven't heard of them, they're this sort of duo from America, and they're two brothers. One of them's 17, one of them was 19, at least at the time we were watching them. I think that was their ages. And it was, oh, God, look at Young, they are so, yeah, and uh, and they were just very, very impressive musicians. I to recall Alex Turner, who was there, uh, the guy from Ferdinand, what's his name? Alex something as well, isn't it? Uh, Tony Visconti, the sort of producer, Bowie producer, and it really felt like pretty much everyone in the audience was uh, music related, one way or another, and it just felt like a sort of little secret we were all being let in on. Um, that was, was quite a night. And then we ended up actually touring with them at the end of last year. So that was nice. What's the weirdest thing you've found in a hotel room? I don't know. It's very boring because you turn up to these hotel rooms and they're just, they're just sort of travel lodges. Yeah. And just sort of, um, I remember being very disorientated one time and it was a travel lodge in the kind of roadside, sort of no man's land of the north of England walking into the room and there being a dog in there, like quite a large dog. In retrospect, it, was, it, was, it was, wasn't our room, but we walked in and that was that was quite uh, terrifying. It was like an Alsatian or something giant like that. But that was pretty weird. So, you know, I think we were sort of a bit discombobulated <laughs> and it was, uh, it was quite striking. I can only imagine when you're entering this room, which is going to be your safe space for the... Yeah, exactly. Night. Finally, we made a safe space. Oh no, there's a massive Alsatian. <laughs> What was the song you heard consistently throughout your childhood that you wish you could forget? Do you remember the Crazy Frog? <laughs> Unfortunately so. Yeah. Not even the song, just the, the original little sound bite that was on people's like Nokia 3310s. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wish I could forget that, but that is forever in my, in my old brain. <laughs> um, Round the Twist, although that is a bloody tune. Do you remember that? No, I don't know that. Australian, Australian children's TV program. Have oh. you ever, ever felt like this? Some strange things happen when you're going round. There's a tune. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, you do now. Okay, good. I just need to sing it and make a fool of myself. It sounded great. <laughs> <laughs> if you were a kitchen appliance, what would you be? And could you make the sound of that appliance? What on earth? Um, I'd be like a tin opener. You know, you're opening difficult things. I feel like that's a good uh, symbolic little metaphor mm. isn't it you can't get into that in that impenetrable tin I can open it for you there's got to be a sound I don't think there is mate I think it's I, I, there's no sound to a tin opener opening a tin <laughs> there isn't it's a silent it's a silent operation what's the sound of a fork a fork it depends what you're using it on well, if it's like you're putting it in a carrot or something it's going to be like a okay alright no, you're better at this game than I am then <laughs> well, okay. I give up. What was the last thing you listened to, and could you do a review of it in one sentence? I've been listening to the Phoebe Bridges album, which mm. I've been really loving. Bought it for my mum for Christmas, thought she'd like it. That's a good review. I've been listening to the Phoebe Bridges album 
quite like it. I bought it for my mum. <laughs> um, really good lyrics. It's really got me um, reinvigorated. We're writing our second record at the moment. It's got me reinvigorated for the lyric side of things, which is my favourite part of the process. And um, hearing her songs, it's been a bit of a kick up the ass. It's just like, right, yeah, there we go. That's, it's a rare thing, I think, for me to be really pulled over by one's words. I think that's the rarest thing. And so that's, uh, I'm, I'm really glad she's come along with that record because it's pretty... Pretty fantastic. Brighton's finest. This is juice.